A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update today, Monday, December 28th. Government today wrapped up measures to ensure locals and visitors adhere to the island's COVID-19 protocols ahead of an expected hectic weekend. At a press conference at Alara Court today, Senator Dr. Jerome Walcott, Health and Wellness Minister Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, and Attorney General Dale Marshall raised serious concern that too many people are flouting the rules and letting their guard down against the viral illness. Insisting that Barbados must not reverse its success in the fight against COVID-19, Walcott announced that starting Wednesday, a special period will be declared with tough measures. These mass gatherings cannot be tolerated. COVID is still present and government has to take action. Some things you have to guard people against themselves. It has been decided plan, again, and the Attorney General is here, he will speak about it, that commencing on Wednesday this week, until Wednesday the 6th, it will be considered a special period in which, and I don't want to speak out of turn, in which the, anyone who wants to have a gathering larger than 150 persons has to apply to the COVID monitoring unit and be sanctioned. Any event that is not sanctioned and over 150 persons will be closed down. At the same time, all events up to a maximum of 250 persons will be tolerated. Adding that Barbados cannot afford another lockdown, Senator Walcott made it clear that mass gatherings will not be allowed and the island security forces will be deployed in joint patrols to ensure locals and tourists comply. We are bringing the defense force and the, and the police into a joint patrol situation as occurs for crop over to deal, especially this week, because we recognize that a lot of persons are in that party mood and we know that when you drink and you're partying you, your inhibitions are removed and you do a number of things that you're not necessarily going to do when you are in clear consciousness and thinking clearly and one of them being wearing masks and, and physical distancing so that will come into force the coast guard will also be on the high seas to keep a close eye on pleasure cruises Meanwhile, Health Minister Lieutenant Colonel Bostick also issued a stern warning to tourists and hoteliers floating the COVID-19 rules. Hotels that continue to flaunt the protocols, as some have been doing, they will be removed or delisted from the list of designated quarantine hotels. And I say that, and I mean that, and that is going to start to happen very, very soon, perhaps as early as by tomorrow morning that action will start because we cannot and will not tolerate a continuation of the flaunting of protocols and I know people call me colonel but I'm not a colonel but for nothing there's a serious side of this colonel and some people are about to see that serious side the country cannot afford for people to recklessly not or recklessly Flaunt, flaunt protocols in this country. Barbadians deserve better than that. And we want this to be a safe destination for visitors and a safe place for our people. So hoteliers and all those responsible for visitors must play their part. The visitors must comply with our regulations and our protocols. And then we can proudly continue to promote Barbados as a safe destination for all. In today's COVID-19 update, confirmed cases of the viral illness moved to 365, 195 females and 170 males after three persons returned positive results for the 1,060 tests completed by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory on Sunday. Those testing positive are a 44-year-old male visitor who arrived on JetBlue on December 26, and a 26-year-old male visitor and a 52-year-old female visitor who each came into contact with a known case. They are all asymptomatic. The number in isolation has increased to 53. No one was discharged from the Harrison Point isolation facility today, so recoveries remain at 305. The lab has conducted a total of 67,709 tests.
In other news this Monday, Alex Tasker should know early in the new year if he will be extradited to the United States to face money laundering charges. Today, 60-year-old Tasker, a former senior vice president at the Insurance Corporation of Barbados Limited, appeared in the District Air Magistrates Court. Tasker was named as a co-conspirator along with former Government Minister Donville Innes and former ICBL Chief Executive Officer Ingrid Innes for allegedly laundering money more than two years ago. Tasker will remain a free man until he reappears in court on January 12, 2021, after his lawyer, Queen's Counsel Andrew Pilgrim, successfully convinced Chief Magistrate Ian Weeks to grant him bail. He was released on $200,000 bail with one surety. There's regional and international news after this short break. Regional news now, in another four years, Guyanese could be in line to receive free education at the University of Guyana. Word of this from President Irfan Ali, who says his government is on a mission to transform the education sector. We are creating a 21st century education system. The One Laptop Per Family Initiative will be reintroduced in the coming year. We are providing 20,000 scholarships. We hope to provide free education at the University of Guyana by the end of 2024. In our emergency budget for 2020, we made provisions for doubling the uniform allowance and increasing by 50% the cash grant per students and every single student in Guyana. We are committed to increasing this by almost 300% in the coming years. On the international scene, a Saudi court today sentenced a prominent women's rights activist to nearly six years in prison after her conviction in a trial that has drawn international condemnation. Hathlul was charged with seeking to change the Saudi political system and harming national security. The trial has drawn international condemnation and poses an early challenge to Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's relationship with US President-elect Joe Biden. Biden has criticized Riyadh's human rights record. Hathlul has been held since 2018, following her arrest, along with at least a dozen other women's rights activists. The court reportedly suspended two years and 10 months of her sentence, which means she could be released around the end of February 2021. <laughs> UN rights experts have called the charges spurious along with leading rights groups and lawmakers in the US and Europe that have been calling for her release. Hathlul had championed women's right to drive and called for an ending of the kingdom's male guardianship system. Rights groups and her family say she's been tortured in prison, a charge denied by the Saudi authorities. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.